everybody in the world, I am Stick Figure Owen. Flesh Owen is up there being all fleshy-like. Gross. He's going to give you a, a little studio tour of his whole setup in a little bit here, but I, Stick Figure Owen, know what you're really here to see. And that's me doing the Stick Figure Cabbage Patch. Yeah, Stick Figure Cabbage Patch. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's take a look at the studio and the, and the and just the garbage that Flesh Owen likes to make. Paper airplane, go! Do we not have the budget for paper airplanes? What sort of a bit? Like a lot of artists out there, I live and work in the same place due to affordability. Which means by default, the place in which I live becomes less and less and less and less livable. Um as I produce work. Right here we have the Cabinet of Curiosities, aka Unidentical Hearts. You could use the tablets here, these little mini iPads, to explore these hearts. And when you explore them, they would trigger interesting animations. Each animation is based on a person who has had a profound impact on my life in some way. Um, and, some, and then there's the 8-bit one and the fire one, which were just super rad to do and fun. Yeah, there we go, augmented reality, and it crashed the program. Over here, we got ourselves the Life Painter. It's actually an exhibit in a suitcase. We got a touch screen in here, and people can actually touch it and paint on the walls using projection through this program. It's pretty cool, animated. Over here, we have the typewriter that is part of Regenerative Letters. So that's a piece that's gonna actually be at Currents. This is an old Olympia typewriter and it's super hooked up to through an Arduino. Let's go ahead and lift this up. Yeah, so you can see I got it all super wired up all haphazardly. Hitting a key is actually making that that little lever go down and it closes a circuit. So it goes from an open circuit to a closed circuit and that sends a signal into a software called Touch Designer. And that software will actually ingest that and create visuals based on what key is pressed, how long it's pressed, and things like that. And over here, just behind the dog bed, we're gonna have to step over it. Is that okay, Maxi Man? I don't know if he likes that. We're gonna go ahead and just kind of look at part of Rockwall. Um, rock wall was kind of an experimental thing when I was trying to test out if making fake rocks would last to being pounded over and over again. You can actually touch them and it will make an actual sound. It's not hooked up right now, but you know, B-roll, all that jazz. Love it. Down here is a bunch of old, old Android cell phones. This is part of a activity that's called paint by cell. So what we would do is use the sensors on these cell phones and kids would shake them around and move them around. Together, it would actually affect a digital painting projected on a wall and we would print these out and people could take them home. Maxi the assistant, have there been any calls? Any messages at all? Did people want to buy my art? Do people understand what I do is art? Good help is hard to find. All right, so this is like my basement workspace. This is where I do all of my woodwork action stuff and I saw things. Um, over here we got my soldering section. It is, I'm not, I'm not clean. Right here, it's literally just a wall. Up there, I usually put a sensor, a LiDAR sensor. So when I'm traveling to places that don't have a good wall to place my Dreamscapes project on, which will be at Currents, I'll project it on this. Over there, you will see a swing. Yes, a swing. On the bottom of this swing, you'll see there's a cell phone case. And just like the cell phones that I was playing with upstairs, I toss a cell phone in there, I use the accelerometer, and when it swings, based on the angle, it will project these crazy, like, kaleidoscope things going on. I always love projection swing, and I also love the fact that I have a swing in my basement. Over here, some actual canvas prints that were printed out of the Living Canvas, which is an interactive piece that will live in three different libraries. But yeah, this is from Adams County, Ohio. 
and I have to get this print to them, which I will do once libraries open back up after the pandemic ends. So what you're currently seeing is the piece that I'm working on right now called Entering Topia. It's a work of interactive web art uh, being developed around the current need for social distancing. And it's going to be the fourth piece in my series called Mediums, which explores how unbelievably bad we are at communication, but how unbelievably beautiful our relentless effort to do it better actually is. The way I see it, over the years, our communication has grown more and more digital. We connect to others like through social media, emojis, hashtags, and now in the age of COVID-19, digital communication, it's, it's no longer an option. It's pretty much the standard. So like some people view this like new digital norm as a precursor to a dystopia. Others see it as a precursor to a utopia, but either way, it's a topia we're stumbling into together, and we're all desperate to connect. So, entering topia is an isolated world of digital communication art, and it's tapped into through the communication tools that we're currently utilizing during the pandemic. You can tweet tumbling text messages, you can scribble emojis and doodles, and you can hashtag colors through Instagram, and you can like texture the topia and change the way that the physics work in the world and the sound through an open Zoom conference call. Hello! Hello, world of topia! Boom, 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 boom! The outcome is this live streamed, floaty, garbled communication world, like a collective bit of just hodgepodge communication. It sometimes like it's hideous, but just like our attempt to communicate, I think it's always really beautiful. As an interactive artist, I'm not making a thing. I'm making a situation, and my hope is that in that situation, I, I help to foster intrinsic curiosity. The idea of curiosity it hits all of my values. One who is curious, just they, they can't really prejudge things. They, they have to explore and they have to wonder and they have to ask and they have to partake with other people and things. So curiosity, it's just this wonderful thing. And in all my projects, as silly as they are, that silly is just a surface. All the visuals, all the pretty stuff, that I see that as, as a lure to bring people in, to kind of pull them in so, so they can then see that that a lot of these things go much deeper than what's on the surface level. That working with other people, you can unlock and open up new modes of interaction, new rewards. I love to reward curiosity. And that's really what this is all about for me.